celebrate our God with an applause and thanksgiving. Come on, would you shout unto God? Would you give him praise, give him glory? Would you give him honor, give him thanksgiving? Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Before you take your seats, would you embrace somebody around you and tell them God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this place. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I get joy when I think about what is done for me. He didn't have to let me live, but he did. And for that, we give him praise, honor, and, uh, and thanksgiving. I want to take a point of personal privilege to express uh, my heartfelt, fond affection and undying appreciation uh, for the life, the ministry, and the legacy of your incredible leader, uh, Bishop Donald Hilliard. Give God some praise. Come on, you can do better than that. It is amazing to know that pastors, cathedral pastors, are rod a lot like pilots. Pastors are a lot like pilots because you only hear about the ones that crash. And we forget about the ones that fly people to safety every week. So jaded is our appreciation for the pilot that we get off the plane and thank the stewardess. And all they did was share peanuts. But the one that navigated through the cumulus clouds was able to circumvent around thunder and lightning. You walk past them because you appreciate soda. But you take safety for granted. Every time you come into the house of God, you know that this is just a layover, that this is not your destination, but the person who's going to help you get to your destiny in God is the person who's been piloting for 31 years. I want you to do me a favor. Would you help me salute and celebrate? Come on, you got to do better than that. Celebrate. You cannot, you cannot be authentically anointed, please hear me, you cannot be authentically anointed and have a balanced life. Whenever it is that you have rendered your life over to God, you have an undocumented bipolar schizophrenia disorder. because you have to hear from God and hear from people who don't listen. And at no point are you celebrated until you've hit the brick wall. And then when you hit the brick wall, people are trying to figure out why you bleed. I might as well say for the preachers who are present, nobody has ever gone to the doctor and when you got to the doctor, they told you the doctor is late or cannot see you today. Watch this, because they have a cold. And then you leave out of the doctor's office and say, I'm not going back there because he got sick and he's supposed to be a healer. But if you find out your pastor contracts what you have, then you can no longer hear him. So saints are selective in scripture. All have sinned except for my pastor. 
And when I find out my pastor has sinned, I've seen too much behind the veil. It is amazing that we declare that the God that we serve was all human and all divine. A hundred percent of each. There's only a few moments that we see a glaring shift in both. But he kicks over the tables. He pulls out a whip. He raises the rhetorical question, who is my mother? That is why Jesus, the most authentic anointed vessel sent from God, could preach to thousands but could only pastor 12. It's because thousands could appreciate his gift but only 12 could handle his personality. It is amazing that for 31 years, you've had the opportunity to see the gift and the person and to be able to stay here after you've seen the encore post the benediction and say, I can handle it. Why? Because there's a trace of him that is reflective of who I am. And I want this pastor to know because here's what the church never teaches. The church is, never teaches us, Danielle, that you can be anointed and be depressed. That you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and still be frustrated. That you can speak in tongues and find a moment where you don't want to speak to the saints. God, I can't hear anybody in here. And still, you got to get to a church and preach to people who go into cruise control because they've become common with your assignment. 67% of all preachers die on Monday. You didn't hear what I just said. 67% of all preachers die on Monday. Why? Because of what they saw or didn't see on Sunday. And so most preachers die from heart-related illness. I want to make sure tonight, hear me, not about money, not about an envelope. I want to make sure that our bishop lives millions of Mondays. That it's not about who's here or not here but that you celebrate the gift that God has given to you. Do me a favor, please. The only person who's angry is the adversary. God gave you the gift. Would you do me a favor, please? Would you just shout for who God gave you and Bishop Donald Hillier? Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, I can't hear anybody. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I, um, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's, um, it's hard to understand the mind of ministry when you realize you have to be out of your mind to do ministry. Everything that God has called you to do is never logical. If it made sense, God didn't give it to you. God always stretches you into a capacity beyond your human limitation. Not because, watch this, he knows you can do it, but he wants you to know unless he gets involved, it won't work. And so for 31 years, you've got to go through trial and error trying to discern, watch this, not the voice of the enemy but discerning the voice of your ego. Have I become, watch this, addicted to the demon called success? Am I effective in ministry if they don't call my name? Am I appreciative, here it is, if my name is never in lights? So you've got to, in fact, operate through the Cirque du Soleil tightrope of lifting him up while staying down but raising a standard at the same time every time you get a moment you ought to be praying for your pastor that God would watch this keep his mind keep his heart 
and keep his focus. Do me a favor. You may be tired of it if you're a visitor, but for those of you who are connected to this colony of faith, one more time, would you celebrate both our bishop and Pastor Phyllis who's watching tonight? Come on, give God some praise. Amen. I'm, uh, I'm honored, Bishop, that you would invite me uh, for your 35th first anniversary. I'm just celebrating 14 years. Uh, Sir Walter Riley, the great navigator and philosopher, so that you can see further when you stand on the shoulders of giants. And Bishop Hilliard is one of the giants of the gospel, and I'm thankful and appreciative for your life. I want to uh, take a moment uh, while we've celebrated Pastor Phyllis and Bishop. Uh, I want to take a moment to thank God uh, for the Hilliard girls. I uh, am uh, thank God for, come on, you can do better than that. You... They are package deal, all. I mean, that's really, I thought I was at the cathedral, amen. And I want you to understand why 87% of preachers' children do not go to church past 20. 87% of preachers' kids don't go to church after they pass the age of 20. Because for 18 years, they had to be their father's mistress. That you have to go see the kids after Bible study. After I get back from the hospital, I'll deal with you when church is over. Give me a minute to finish this phone call. So for all three of them to still be in love with God and have relationship with Jesus Christ, means more than being your bishop he's been the priest of his home and for that example that means a whole lot more than anything he's done at this cathedral come on help me thank god for the father the grandfather the husband for 31 years you only had one first lady you ought to be shouting about that all by yourself for that we're grateful i uh Extend greetings on behalf of the entire um, Bryant family. Uh, my father has such rich affection uh, for Bishop Hilliard. Uh, Bishop Hilliard is the only person outside of the AMU Reformation that he's consecrated uh, as a bishop because he has such confidence in the apostolic order that rests on your bishop's life. I want to say a word in route uh, to the word of God. Well, I'll just say the word. If, uh, if you have your Bibles, go to Genesis, please. Genesis chapter 4. It ought not take you that long to find the first book. <laughs> first book of the Bible. If y'all can't find Genesis 4, I take back everything I said about Bishop's leadership. <laughs> Genesis chapter 4. Would you please stand uh, for the reading of God's word? If you'll give me just a little bit more. Thank you. Uh, in route to, um, uh, to that, I want to share with you about two products that I've brought uh, with us tonight. There are so many gifts that are available and in operation in the body of Christ. Uh, you have those like your bishop who can uh, preach uh, literally the horns off of a billy goat. Uh, you've got gifts like Elder Fondria Luce, who, who can deal in deliverance. You've got uh, people who have the gift of prophecy and people who have the gift of laying on of hands. Uh, God has given me a peculiar gift for the 21st century church, and that is uh, the gift of the discernment of dreams, uh, giving confirmation uh, of dreams and giving understanding uh, of dreams. Uh, and to that end, with the hand that you have available, those of you who have a dream that has not yet happened, would you lift up that hand? You have a dream that has not yet happened. If, in fact, you're believing it's going to happen, would you wave that hand? 
you believe it's going to happen. I want to say a word about your dream very quickly. Here's what I want you to know, pastors, is that the average person, hear me, dreams three dreams a night. The average person dreams three dreams a night, and more often than not, you remember the last five minutes of the last dream. Your dreams cathedral happen between 11.30 and 3.30. Between 11.30 and 3.30, when you hit an area of sleep called REM. And God gave me a clear confirmation uh, on how to know when you are authentically anointed. You are authentically anointed, watch this, not predicated on the kind of car you drive or the square footage of your home or what kind of business you have. Hear me, you know you are anointed when you have trouble going to sleep at night. Watch this. The enemy has resolved if he cannot kill you, he'll just keep you awake. God, I wish I had some worshipers here. Because if he keeps you awake, he'll block you from seeing the sneak preview of what God has for you. Some of you, I wish you would get it tonight. God told me to tell you, beginning tonight, you're getting ready to enter a season of uninterrupted rest. He's going to give you a peace that passes all understanding. I don't know where you are, but those of you who believe by faith, you're going to get the best sleep you've had in three years. I want you to open up your mouth and thank him for it even now. That's this. Whenever God gives you a dream, hear me, whenever God gives you a dream, it cannot just benefit you. If it just benefits you, it is not a dream, it's a goal. God, watch this, has impregnated you with a dream, hear me, that may not benefit you. The people who are close to you, please hear me, are going to benefit even if they don't help you. Y'all don't like me tonight. All right, you remember a man by the name of Joseph? When Joseph's dream came to pass, hear me, nobody in his family ever went back to work. All of them got property. I can't hear anybody in here. The reason why you've got such stress and tension in your family is because they don't recognize you're the one that carries the oil. And God is getting ready to use you to shift everything that is connected to your family. I need 50 of you, watch this, that can handle it. God is getting ready to make family members apologize by Thanksgiving. Be because they mishandled the level of anointing that rests on your life. I need 50 people to just shout, my dream is going to happen. My, my dream is going to happen. I want you to get this two-part series. I'm going to be in, uh, for those of you who grew up in the church, I'll be in the vestibule uh, after uh, church is over. Those of you who are new to the church, I'll be in the lobby. Uh, but I, I, I want you to please uh, get that. Uh, and then uh, I, I need you, please, this is a season where I believe that God is getting ready to bless entrepreneurs. He's getting ready to bless entrepreneurs. By 2017, America is going to produce 100,000 new millionaires. You just missed what I said. I said by 2017, America is going to produce 100,000 new millionaires. Y'all are slow. Let me see if I can help you. By 2017, there are going to be 100,000 new millionaires. I don't know what your faith is. My faith says 100 are in this room. God, I can't hear anybody. I said a hundred of them are in this room. And I, uh, I, I wrote a book called The Big Idea. The Big Idea When God Impregnates Imagination. When God impregnates imagination. Watch this. This is for those of you. God has already given you the name of the business. He's already given you the concept of the business. Here it is. He's getting ready to breathe on entrepreneurs. Amen. According to Black Enterprise, 76% of all black businesses failed the first year. Not because of poor product, but because of poor support. But God is getting ready to send people to bless your business. 
He's getting ready to send people who are going to underwrite your idea. You don't even know he's getting ready to set up unconventional funding for stuff the bank can't even see. Uh, the, the, those of you who believe by faith, you are too anointed just to be an employee. Did, did you hear what I just said? I said you are too anointed just to be an employee. I want you to get this book on the big idea. It's going to bless you long after this night is over. I was just giving you time to find the book of Genesis. Genesis 4. Genesis 4. Uh, if you'll help me just one, uh, one, one not up, it'll help me uh, fight to live another day. Genesis 4. And I want to illuminate for your understanding, uh, beginning in verse 4. Well, let's begin at verse 5. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is at your door. It desires to have you. Watch this. But you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, watch this. This is after talking to God. Cain says to Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. You may be seated. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. And the Lord said, what have you done with your brother? For the time that is allotted to me, I want to preach a rod tonight using as a subject how to get away with murder. to get away with murder. Look at the person beside you and tell them, I need this message. Huh? <laughs> Bishop Shonda Rhimes is now reigning Thursday night on ABC being the first black and first woman to have four shows on at the same time from Grey's Anatomy at 8, Scandal at 9, and the latest runaway sensation at 10, that has millions of Americans engaged in judicial conversations. Its plot emanates around a Philadelphia law school class led by a renegade professor and lawyer portrayed by Viola Davis. Her teaching methodology is far from conventional. And the aim of the law as she sees it is not to uphold the law, but rather to manipulate the law in order to win. Hence, the name of the class is mirrored by the name of the show with echoes as the title of this sermon, How to Get Away with Murder. In episode one, she entreats the students to formulate theories that will aid and assist her in a case that she's working on and extends to them three viable pointers that would consistently assist them in succeeding. I want to, um, I want to share those three with you tonight. She said, if you want to win, the very first thing you have to do Hear this. Number one is you have to discredit the witness. The overall motive, here it is, is to cause doubt in jurors' minds. 
For jurors are instructed that they may acquit a defendant if they have a reasonable doubt. So by the letter of the law, a criminal defendant can only be convicted if proven beyond reasonable doubt. I'm here, ladies and gentlemen, for maybe not you, but for somebody who is sitting close to you because they don't even realize that over the last 18 months, there's been a diabolical attempt afoot by the enemy to raise reasonable doubt. The enemy, you don't even know, has been trying to make you doubt your call. Been trying to make you doubt your gift. Trying to make you doubt your assignment. For some of you, he's been trying to make you doubt your placement. And you know that there is promise on your life and promise for your future when people always want to bring up your past. It is only if you have a bad past that you're going to have a good future. You'll notice that the enemy can only bring up your past. Why? Because he has no authority over your future. So people who are legitimately anointed, be weary of attacks because it is just the enemy's inept attempt to discredit the witness. They'll try to find something that will take away the merits of God's grace. The second thing, after they discredit the witness, the second thing that has to be done, hear this, is that um, you have to introduce a new suspect. Introduce a new suspect. Uh, if I can uh, throw someone else in the scenario, then the attention is shifted away from me. And so you've got to be careful of insecure people who will always talk about people because they are afraid that the light will hit them. It is amazing that they always have to introduce a new suspect. So three um, major networks yesterday threatened not to carry our president's address on immigration, claiming, if you can imagine this, it was too political, and you're the president. All of this afoot by the Republican Party, who forgets that this piece of legislation was not even originally authored by Obama, it was authored by Ronald Wilson Reagan. But if you can introduce a new suspect and throw the attention away from the person who's really guilty, then you can convict them. So right now, hundreds of people are falling into the streets of Ferguson, Missouri, and casters, newscasters don't know how to typify them because if in fact they were Caucasian, they'd be protesters. But because they're black, they're rioters. So you introduce new suspects. So we claim here it is that this is unbridled rage and these young people don't know how to handle and carry themselves, not to mention that Darren Wilson unloaded eight bullets on an unarmed 18-year-old boy. So we'll make the boy, watch this, the new suspect, so that you don't focus on Darren Wilson, who 106 days later still has not been indicted introduce a new suspect and you'll forget who's really guilty. The third strategy, watch this, the third strategy is bury the evidence. In other words, hide it so it'd be hard for the defense to find it. That's what's happening in Ferguson right now while I speak. They have been, watch this, burying the evidence. How is that possible, Pastor? You remember August the 9th, 2.30 in the afternoon when it is that Michael Brown, just 700 feet from his grandmother's front door, is in fact slain in the middle of the street and his body left limplessly there for four and a half hours. The ambulance is not called. Vitals are not checked. Here it is. And then, ladies and gentlemen, what you are forgetting, how it raised to a national phenomenon is that the police tried to put his body into an unmarked car 
Well, they attempted to put his body in an unmarked car. Then neighbors came out with cell phones and began to record it, and they dropped the body. Here it is because it was their intention to bury the evidence. I think I've gone too far. Let me come up fair. America, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want you to ever forget this night because you are on the precipice of a historical moment. What is getting ready to take place? This is this generation's Selma, Alabama. This is the hour, here it is, that the sleeping giant of America's consciousness, here it is, about to be awakened. America, I hope you can handle it, has gotten away with murdering far too many black boys. They got away with murdering 17-year-old Trayvon Martin for wearing a hoodie. They got away with murdering John Crawford in Ohio for carrying a water gun in Target. They got away with killing 43-year-old Michael Gardner right in New York City just for trying to disrupt a fight. They almost got away with killing Jordan Davis for playing music too loud. And they thought, they thought they were going to get away with it once more and again in a hamlet of a town called Ferguson, Missouri that a hundred days ago you had never heard of, but now it is dripping off the lips of every person with a semblance of consciousness, and America thinks they're going to get away with murder. I think I ought to tell you this. The devil comes to steal. He comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. I'm not in Ferguson tonight, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm far from Sanford, Florida. God knows, please hear me, that we're not in Birmingham. And so I don't even need you to put it under historical record. Tonight I came not even to tell you. I came to tell every demon, every witch, every warlock, every hater that thought they were going to kill you that they're not going to get away with it. They must have forgotten that God was very clear. Touch not my anointing and do my servant no harm. I came for 100 worshipers who know that the enemy has been trying to kill you, been trying to make you lose your mind, trying to make you commit suicide, trying to make you wave the white flag, trying to make you surrender, trying to make you backslide, trying to break you. But I came to let the enemy know if you were going to kill me, it would have happened before I got to church tonight. But because I'm here, I can make the testimony. In him I live. In him I move. In him I have my very being. Everybody in this room who's over 30 survived two things that should have killed you. You survived something that should have caused you to have a nervous breakdown. But but you were able to testify, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Now, if you ain't survived nothing, don't say nothing. But but if you came through some stuff and you got to say if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Be seated, please. Be seated, please, right where you are. Hallelujah. I can drive by myself. Look at the person beside you say I should have been dead a long time ago. You don't know what I walked away from. You you don't know the car accidents I was in. You you don't know the people that tried to set me up. But I came to tell the enemy I'm still here. After everything I've been through, I still got my joy. (laughs) Hallelujah. Be seated, please. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Be seated right where you are. I need you to look at your row and tell your row the enemy meant it for evil. Hallelujah. They didn't come to have church. Look down the other side of your row. Tell them the enemy meant it for evil. But God is getting ready to turn it out for my good. Who should be shouting right now? Every person in this room, if cancer runs in your family, heart attacks run in your family, strokes run in your family, kidney failure runs in your family, you ought to be shouting, I should have been dead, but I'm still here. 
Be seated, please. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm still here. God help me. I want to thank him. Not because I got money. I'm, I ain't thanking him for no job. I'm not even thanking him for my house. Why are you praising him? I'm praising him because I'm in the sanctuary and not in the mortuary. Anybody can just thank God. I'm alive today to give him glory and praise. Be seated, please. Um, in Genesis 4, in Genesis 4, there are two brothers. Watch this. There are two brothers named Cain and Abel. And the Bible says, watch this, at the right time, they brought an offering. Hallelujah. At the right time, they brought an offering. Cain brought some fruit. I'm in verse number three. But Abel, watch this, brought fat from his firstborn flock. I'm in verse number four. And they did it, here it is, cathedral, at the right time. And God, watch this, looked at their offering. Here's what significant choir, he did not look at how they danced. Sound oh, man, I got too much feedback. He didn't look, watch this, at how they clapped or how they hollered because he understood actions speak louder than words. Hallelujah. And a whole lot of you are full of sound and fury signifying nothing because you shout but don't sacrifice. God, eh? we have raised a generation of welfare worshipers who, who just want to be debt free through osmosis but don't want to make sacrifice and don't want to sow and don't want to make an investment. This ain't for everybody but this is just, watch this, for the tithers who are in the house. God says because you've been faithful over a few things I'm getting ready to make you ruler over many. For some of y'all you can't shout about it but God says if you give me glory and you're a tither, I'm putting the equity back in your house. Everything you spent out of your savings, I'm getting ready to replenish. I'm getting ready to change your retirement package because I owe you some stuff. Cain made a contribution. but Abel made a sacrifice. Now here's what's significant and striking, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope ministers you'll get it. Abel, here it is, if we do, uh, 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 um, uh, if we do an understanding of, of, of his name, Abel, watch this, is the abbreviation, what is the derivative by which we get the word ability. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I am. I just need every person in this room, if you'll just extend your hand. You can remain seated. Hallelujah. You can. Now, this is what I want you to do. I only want you to lift your hand as high as you see yourself going. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God sent me on divine assignment for mature believers tonight. And when I speak it, here it is. If I'm talking to you, your soul is going to respond. God told me to tell you, this ain't the hour I'm getting ready to just write blank checks. But this is the hour for mature people that I'm getting ready to put favor on your ability. Hallelujah. You, you get ready to step into a dimension. Here it is that you didn't even learn from a school. You didn't read in a book. For 90 of you, you don't even have a mentor. You haven't even been trained in it. Here it is. You don't even know where to start. But God says, I'm getting ready to add favor to your ability. You get ready to pass people.
people who thought they were smarter than you. You you get ready to go into places of people that got more experience, that got more tenure. Y'all ain't talking back to me. He said, but because you trusted me and because you sold in my house, I'm getting ready to anoint your ability. Now, if you don't have any gift, this ain't your message. But if you know there is something you have and all you need is God to give favor to your ability. God said the year will not end before I give your ability an opportunity. And you ought to be giving God glory for the greatest opportunity your ability has ever had. He's adding favor to your ability. You don't even have the title, but you got the oil. God, God, I can't hear nobody in here. You ain't even the manager, but everybody comes to you for help. You, here, your own life is falling apart, and you got the nerve to be counseling people. He is getting ready to add favor to your ability. Hallelujah. You, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I need you to notice something that is peculiar and strange to the text. I need you to see something that's peculiar and strange to the text. Keep your Bibles ajar. I'm still in Genesis 4. I'm now in verse 5. Watch this. And Cain becomes angry. Do you see that in your Bible? Genesis 4, verse 5, clause A. And Cain becomes angry. Watch this. And he's angry, here it is, because of what he's given. You are getting ready to attract another level of haters. Oh, God. See, most of you have only had to fight and contend with people who don't like you based off of what you have. God help me. But you get ready to have a level, here it is, of opposition, not because of what you have, but because of what you've given. I gave our church this simple prayer at the beginning of the year. I'm going to give it to you tonight, Cathedral. This is what I want you to pray. Would you pray with me out loud? It's a one sentence prayer. Would you repeat after me? Lord, come on, say it like you mean it. Lord, make me the biggest giver at my church. All right, now we get ready to pray that one more time. Would you repeat after me? Lord, make me the biggest giver at my church. Now, why does God have to answer that prayer? He's got to answer that prayer, watch this, because nobody prays it. Everybody always prays about wealth, here it is, and increase for how it's going to benefit them. But God says, I'm getting ready to bless people who I can trust who got a heart and a burden for the things of God and ministry. Here it is, that I'm getting ready to help you underwrite everything that comes into your bishop's imagination. When God gives you an idea, it'll never match your budget. But if you can get lined up with the things of God, God will bless you exponentially. I want folk to hate you not because of what you have, but because every time the bishop makes an announcement, you can say, Bishop, we don't got to do no campaign. We don't need no envelopes. I'm just going to write a check myself for whatever it is. Y'all don't have that kind of faith. But those of you that believe God can give you so much resource that whatever God gives the hand, I'll be able to pay for it. Huh. Folk, you may be mad at you because of what you gave. And they wouldn't be mad, watch this, um, unless uh, you investigate the obvious. Cain had to be close to Abel when he made the sacrifice. Watch this. So the person, watch this, who's mad with Abel is not a heathen. It's not just his brother, it's somebody who goes to his same church. 
God, I can't hear anybody in here. What happens, here it is, because I thought church was the place where people would be happy for me. God, I, I had no idea in church people would be petty and jealous and small-minded. Y'all ain't talking back to me. So this is what I got to make sure is that when God blesses me, he does not limit it to me. But whoever is sitting on my row will flow in the same kind of anointing. I can't find the church in here because I don't want nobody to look at my envelope and get an attitude. But I want when they see what I'm giving for them to be in inspired to know if God could help them do it he could do the same thing for me tonight we're going to break the spirit of jealousy I want you to give God glory not that he would just bless you but for whoever is sitting on your road tonight that every time God increases you he's going to increase whoever is sitting oh y'all better move your seat did y'all see that they not shouting for you but if you believe God's going to bless every person that's sitting on your row from the top of their head to the soul of their feet. Be seated, please. Watch what the Lord says. Um, to Cain. He says to Cain, what is my responsibility to say to you tonight? Watch this. If, um, if you give with a sacrifice, I'm in Genesis 4 verse 7, if you give with a sacrifice, here's what's going to happen. Um, I'm keeping sin from your door. He doesn't say, if you shout, I'll keep sin from your door. Not if you pray, not even, watch this, does he say, if you fast? He says, when you give, I'll keep it from your door. Some of you are not going to like it, but for those of you that can handle it. Uh, he says, watch this, I've got to keep it from your door because I know your level of brokenness. Because if sin comes to your door, some of us are crazy enough to open it. <laughs> All the more, watch this, if I can expand the analogy. He says, I'm keeping it out of your door. Watch this, because I don't want it in your house. Oh God, I can't hear him on You don't even understand what is happening in the house of God in the spirit realm tonight. God says, while you are worshiping me in my house, I just broke into your house. And whatever is in your house that is out of order, by the time you get back home, the spirit of your house will be shifted. God, I, I need those of you, watch this, who ain't so churchy. God said, don't worship me like you in the cathedral. Here it is, worship me like you walking around your living room. Worship me like you anointing your child's bedroom. Worship me like you just evicted every foul spirit, every spirit of argument. God, shift my house. Hallelujah. I, I can't hear any worshipers. I, I need you to clean up that house. God, if I got 50 of you in the room, would you just open up your mouth and, and just begin to worship him? Watch this. Like there's a new spirit in your house. There's, there's a new attitude in your house. I, I still can't have any worshipers. He, he said, if you worship me, no sickness in your house. No anger is in your house. No, no unhappiness is in your house. No moral failure is in your house. No addiction is in your house. No abuse is in your house. Hallelujah. Where? I need radical worshipers right through here. 
If you crazy enough to love God the way I do, this is just for 50 of y'all. Do me a favor just to drive the enemy crazy. Will you speak your address out loud? I said, speak your address. God, I feel you in this room. I said, speak your address out loud. And God said, speak the name Jesus. I said, speak the name Jesus. You just gave Jesus permission to go into your house and to sweep your house. I need every worshiper in this room to cry out unto God like he's cleaning your house. Be seated, please. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. She can I thank you, Holy Ghost. I, 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 I feel them in this room. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I don't need everybody, I just need a few intercessors. Hallelujah. I just need them in this house. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Clean this house. I only need 30 people. God help me. I don't need you to play with it. I need you to war for it. With Hallelujah. I need you to go in the battle for your child's house. God help me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you open up your mouth, he's getting ready to shift the house. Hallelujah. Before Thanksgiving gets here, the attitude of everybody that lives in your house is going to be different. I, I need you to worship him like you trust God with your house. God, I can't hear anybody. Hey, hey, this ain't for cars, clothes, and money, but I need you to warfare for your son, and I need you to cry out for your daughter. I, I need you to yell for your brother. I, I need you to holler for your husband. God is getting ready to shift this house. Huh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Watch this. Hey, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I, I think I better tell y'all something. Watch this. In ancient Palestine, watch this. In ancient Palestine, um, there, there are no addresses to the house. In Jerusalem, watch this, there are no numbers on the door. God, I, I hope y'all can handle this cathedral. I, I, I am, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Jamal Harrison Bryant. That's who I am. Uh, I come from the house of Bryant. Now, my parents live in Chicago. My parents live in Chicago. I live in Baltimore. I only got one sister. She lives in Los Angeles. Watch this. My father is in Chicago. I'm in Baltimore, but I'm still under the house of Brian. God help me. My mail doesn't go to Chicago. My calls are not there. Watch this. But because I have the name. God help me. Everything that's connected to my father's house is connected to me. See, y'all ain't shouting right. Let me see if I can help you. When you worship God, hear me very carefully. When you worship God tonight, it is not for your physical address. What are you saying, Pastor? When you worship God tonight, angels are going to look out, watch this, for whoever got your last name. God, God I can't hear nobody. When you cry out unto God, whoever got your last name is getting ready to be touched by God. Why? You under the same house. All right. 
I'm almost finished. You, you may be seated right where you are. Thank you. You may be seated. Um, and he said, Lord, um, he said to Cain, if um, you would just do what's right, then that same favor would be on you. So Cain has the formula for success. But rather than following God's plan, he follows hood instincts. He says, rather than trying to improve myself, let me kill him. It's amazing how many people who think by trying to cut you off God, that it's going to improve who they are. God, God, I can't hear nobody. Even if you wore my clothes, you couldn't carry it like me. God, I can't hear nobody. Even if you tried to wear it like me, you still ain't me. No, no matter what you do, you still got to have your own. So uh, Cain says to ability. Cain says to ability. Watch this. You only need Cain's if you're handicapped. Oh, God. Something's not functioning. Something's not flowing. Something is not operable. Something doesn't have strength. That's when you pull out a Cain. So Cain, watch this, walks with ability and he doesn't feel needed. Why? Because ability has strength. God help me. A lot of people will turn against you when you no longer need them. As long as you codependent, y'all ain't talking back to me, they'll be all in your face. But as soon as you get your strength back, then they got a problem with your independence. So Cain takes ability out in the field. And when he gets ability in the field, he kills him. Bishop, thank you for having me for, um, for the six minutes I have left. I want to walk you through the criminal pathology of Cain. So he kills ability, watch this. And after he kills ability, he looks around in this field. And after looking around in the field, he presumes he's gotten away with murder. He looks around, watch this, and because they are in an empty field, stay with me, Cathedral, because they're in an empty field, number one, there are no witnesses. Now, because there are no witnesses, watch this, I can go now to number two. Now, because there are no witnesses, watch this, there's no reason to introduce a new suspect. Because nobody has seen the crime, watch this, there is no body of evidence, there was no crowd, nobody was with a cell phone, but here's, watch this, here's where Cain made the flaw in the perfect crime. The flaw he made, watch this, is he forgot to bury the evidence. Had he buried the evidence, he would have got away with murder. All right, I, um, I think I've lost you. Uh, let, me, uh, let me do a cross analysis of the text and um, uh, let's jaywalk into the New Testament. And when we do it, uh, we, we, we've got to circumnavigate uh, around the Garden of Gethsemane. When we get to the Garden of Gethsemane, the police of Ferguson, I mean the police of Jerusalem, uh, they, uh, they show up, watch this, without a warrant. God help me. They show up without a warrant and without any charges. 
And they're coming, watch this, to arrest Jesus, knowing they have no case. Coming to arrest him, watch this, Jesus has enlisted in the disciples somebody who has hood instincts. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's got undelivered ghettoisms. So the police come to arrest Jesus, and by instinct, he forgot that this is, in fact, the ascriber of nonviolence and passive resistance, and this was just supposed to be a peaceful demonstration. He forgets that going with Jesus, you ain't even supposed to have the knife. So instinctively, ladies and gentlemen, he, he goes into his sash, pulls out a knife, watch this, and then chops off the ear of the centurion. At this moment, watch this choir, at this moment, everybody freezes. Everybody freezes. Why? Because we have a legal dilemma. We've got a legal dilemma, watch this, because in Rome, if you assault, watch this, hurt or injure a police officer, watch this, it warrants crucifixion. So the officers are trying to figure out, here it is, because we only got one set of handcuffs. Do we now arrest Peter? And Jesus, watch this, messes up the crime scene. Before they can come up with yellow tape. Before they call for a Ziploc bag. God, God help me. Jesus picks up the ear, puts it back on the face of the arresting officer. God help me. And they don't know what to do. Cathedral, y'all better know when to shout. Why? Because Jesus just got rid of the evidence. God, I need some worshipers in here. Do you want to know why you ain't dead? The stuff you did, the stuff that you messed up over, God got rid of the evidence. And you ought to be shouting right now. If these folk knew what I did, they wouldn't even want to be with me in church. Huh. Be seated, please. I'm I'm coming around the mountain. Here they come. Would you, would you look at your road and look at your neighbor and tell him he got rid of the evidence? You, hallelujah. You don't even know the stuff I did. You, you don't even know the places I've been. You, you don't even know who I used to roll with. He, he got rid of the evidence. Look, look at me. I'm a testimony. I didn't make it on my own. It ain't because I'm perfect. Is he got rid of the evidence? If you ain't never done nothing, don't say nothing, but if. God, I can't hear nobody. The folk you used to run with look 10 years older than you. You, you ought to thank God he got rid of the evidence. My time is up. Um, God, I can't find my real church if, if you ever drank but you didn't become an addict. Y'all ain't talking back to me. If, hallelujah, you ever had unprotected sex and you HIV negative? You ought to be shouting, he got rid of the evidence.
I need you right where you are. My time is up. If, um, if you'll take your neighbor by the hand, please. Softly strings, please. Strings, thank you. Cain thought he got away with it. And the Lord asked him one last question. Where is your brother? And Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? Whoever's hands you got, tell him I got you, I got you. I need you to pull on that neighbor's hand so the enemy knows that he can't kill your neighbor while you on the watch. <laughs> Whoever's hand you're holding, pull on them and say, stick with me through this. Stick with me. I Look at me now. Tell them I've had some near-death experiences. I, I survived some stuff that some weaker people wouldn't have been able to handle. He said, where is your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? Hallelujah. I need you ever so gently to just squeeze that neighbor's hand. Hallelujah. He, he will keep you in perfect peace. God, I feel a breakthrough getting ready to happen in this room. Huh? He is a keeper of your soul. I'm getting ready to close, but I, I feel like a sound of worship needs to come right through here. I'm getting ready to pause. Pastor, why am I getting ready to worship? God told me to tell you, whatever you endure, when you worship me, watch this, your neighbor won't have to live through it. God, I can't hear anybody. I, Whatever you had to come out of, whatever you had to survive, God said, if you give me glory, your neighbor will never have to go through it. God, I can't hear any worshipers. You ain't never going to go through a nasty divorce. You ain't never going to file bankruptcy. You ain't never going to lose a child. I can't hear anybody. You ain't never going to be stabbed in the back by phony friends. You ain't never going to fight through depression. Whatever I went through, I went through for both of us. I am my brother's keeper. I hope somebody's hand is in your hand. He said, Cain, you would have got away with it. But you left one piece of evidence. God, help me to preach it right. That even if you got rid of his body, you couldn't do nothing with the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing. God, I can't find a real church. But the blood. Let's get ready to be a worship. We get ready to go where cathedral has never gone before. Let's get ready to be a sound of worship. Hear me. That will not benefit you. Did you hear what I just said? I said, you getting ready to worship God and it won't benefit you. For 60 seconds, 60 seconds uninterrupted, you getting ready to worship God on behalf of whoever's hand you're holding. God, I can't hear anybody that the blood will cover them. Hey, I can't hear nobody. I said, I need you to open up your mouth like you need the blood. Hey, is that all y'all got, New Jersey? 
Would you cry out unto God? Would you bless his holy name? Would you yell for the blood? You only got 10 seconds left. Thank him for the blood. Where are my worshipers? Thank him for the blood. Loose that neighbor's hand and lift it up towards heaven. Very softly, minstrels, because of the working of the blood. Hallelujah. Because of the power of Pentecost and the complete work on the cross, I speak over every lifted hand that the death assignment over your life just got canceled. God, I didn't care hear nobody. Whatever the enemy was going to use to kill you just got backfired. You ought to shout tonight like God is covering your life. I speak over every lifted hand, the anointing of Hezekiah. He just added 15 years to your life. You didn't hear what I just said. He just added 15 years to your life. I'm speaking to you, Bishop. He just added 15 years to your life. God, I can't hear nobody. I want you to give God glory. Watch this. Like you believe the next 15 years of your life is going to be the best 15 years you ever had. Would, would you shout tonight like God just extended with no music. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I want to shout in here that's going to give the devil a nervous breakdown. Would you just shout, watch this, just because God's keeping you alive? Would you? God, I can't hear anybody. I said, would you shout like God is keeping you alive? <laughs> Lift up that hand. I want to pray for you. Before I pray, would you just open up your mouth and give God the sound of your worship? Come on, turn it up. Thank him for keeping you alive. Where are my worshipers? Satan thought he had you, but God has kept you alive. Seated. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? Come on, lift up that voice. How great is our God? Come on, let's try it from the top one more time. Lift up that hand, how great, how great, softly, softly, is our God. Sing with me. How great, how great. 
is our God. You may be seated. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Come on, lift up that hand. How great thou art. Come on, I can't hear anybody. Lift up that voice. How great thou art. Come on, one more time. Then sings my soul. Then sing my soul. My Savior God to thee. Come on, lift up that hand as you lift up your voice. How great thou art. How great thou art. You are Alpha and Omega. Come on, I'm looking for my worshipers. We worship you. Our Lord, you are worthy to be great. Can we sing it one more time? Would you lift up that hand? You are and Omega. And Omega, we worship you. We worship you, our Lord. For you are, you are worthy to be praised. You may be seated. You may be seated. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. Can't hear you. I once was lost, but now I was blind, but now I see. With no music, let me just hear you. Oh, oh, how. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. You may be seated. Maybe seated right where you are. Would you just welcome God into this place? Come on, I can't hear you. I said, would you welcome him? Listen, this is what I need you to do. Listen to me very carefully. Bishop is getting ready to come. I need to um, do one last thing before we leave on tonight. For the last 18 months, God has had me um, very softly minstrels, almost in a careless whisper. God has had me under apostolic arrest for a strange assignment in the body of Christ. 
uh, that I cannot uh, leave without uh, concluding that. For the last 18 months, God has had me under restrict order. Never leave a place. Never leave a country. Never leave a coliseum. Never leave a conference. Never leave a church without concluding this assignment. I want you to hear me very carefully. Says Jamal, wherever you go, there is a pervasive spirit in the body of Christ that's gone unaddressed. And I want you to deal with it before you leave. And Bishop, that spirit is the spirit of jealousy. It's a terrible thing when God blesses you and you don't know who you can call. Some people will only be happy for you until you pass them. And then when you get more than them, then they begin to act shady. But God has given me to break the spirit of jealousy. I want you to hear me very carefully. I want to, out of the integrity that your bishop has in bringing me here, I want to be very transparent on what's getting ready to take place. I want you to listen with your rapt attention. Cathedral, I'm getting ready to raise an offering. Can I raise an offering? Um, but I, um, I need to say a couple of things before we do that. First thing that I need you to know, and it's going to throw you off, we can raise an offering, and I'm not promising you anything. Yeah, we got some. We've turned seed sowing into Atlantic City. It says if you give, you're going to be debt free. If you give, you're never going to be broke again. If you give, your manager going to quit. All of that sounds good. But the reality is your blessing is that you have something to give. So I'm not promising you anything. The second thing that I need you to be quiet, fully cognizant of, hear me, is I don't have you shouting. I don't have the band in high gear. Why? Because after 31 years of ministry, you shouldn't need emotional manipulation. There's enough word in you. Here it is that you understand the power of giving and what that means. Here's what's getting ready to happen, and I want you to please prepare yourself for 31 years of faithful service. All I'm asking tonight is for 31 people to give $100. 31, that's it. Now watch this. Please hear me in the balcony, in the choir loft, hear me. If you do not have $31, I'm not talking to you. We got rid of guilt offerings in Leviticus, all right? We now under the new covenant. 31 people are gonna give a seed. We wanna honor, cherish, and celebrate our leader on the night. Hear me very carefully. They're going to come and they're gonna put that seed in my hand. They're coming under divine covering and covenant that we're believing for the extension and for the health of our bishop's life. Y'all didn't hear what I just said for the covering and for the health of our bishop's life. 31 of you are getting ready to come. If you're writing a check, you're writing it out to the cathedral. Only ask, here it is, that you would be mindful this is not a word of faith church. What does that mean? Only write the check if you sure it's gonna clear. And, uh, if, if you're not sure, hold it till Sunday. I don't want Bishop to say all the checks bounced on AME night, amen. So I need you to make sure it's going to clear. 31 of you, watch this, you're going to get that seed. If you have cash, wonderful. Uh, we are technologically savvy enough. If you need to give uh, electronically, then you're able to do that. 31 of you, here it is, for every year, God has labored uh, through our bishop to give. Now, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. When those 31 people come, I want you to clap for them. Pastor, why am I going to do that? Because even though I don't have it, somebody does. And if God could bless my neighbor, I know he's going to bless the neighborhood. Amen. It's not going to take us long. I promise you it's not going to take us long. 31 of you, you've been blessed. Some word, some testimony, some prayer, some gesture has blessed you over these 31 years. And we want to express that to our bishop. Every leader, every minister head, amen. Every person who has been impacted, you ought to be running like it's the price is right. Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, that the people on The Price is Right, they know how to shout better than church people. Why? Because they shout louder, not for the prize. They shout just because their name got called. Amen. 
Uh, you ought to be thankful under God to that. Here it is. The only thing I'm going to ask you, Cathedral, is nobody stops clapping until nobody else is coming. But as long as they're coming, I want you to keep clapping, knowing that God is going to do it. Okay? <clears throat> If you're writing a check, you're writing it to Bishop Hilliard. If you already wrote it to Cathedral, we'll work it out. Amen. Come stand in this line. Cathedral, that's really how y'all going to act? Come on, this is your leader. This is your leader. I don't see enough choir robes in this aisle. I need some more men in this aisle. Come on, quickly, quickly. I tell the members of our church, you can't be saved and stuck up. Amen. You got to believe that God's given me to bless you to be a blessing to other people. Cathedral, clap till your hand turns red. Y'all still ain't clapping good. Clap like the enemy's head is in between your hands. How many is it? They still coming. How y'all feel about it? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Come on, quickly. Thank you. One. Come on, keep clapping. Two. Thank you. Three. Four. Thank you. Thank you. They still come. Y'all ain't clapping. Five. Six. Seven. Would you stay right here? Wait a minute. Y'all clapping like we're in a bingo hall. Come on. Thank you. Eight. Nine. Ten. Thank you. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, thank you, 15, 16, 17, y'all ain't clapping good, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, Let's add 15 years to his life. One, thank you. Two, I can't hear nobody. Three, four, five, thank you. Six, they still coming. How you feel about it? Seven, thank you. I still need six more to come real quick. Thank you. Here comes eight. Thank you. I'm coming into agreement with you. Thank you. I'm waiting on nine. I don't know where you are. Where's nine, please? Y'all getting slow. Would you look at your neighbor and say, I like your shoes. I like your shoes. Now tell them, anybody that got them kind of shoes got to have $100. Hallelujah. I need you to come very quickly. Please, wherever, come out, come out wherever you are. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Where are you? Thank you. That's 10. Thank you. Here comes 11. Y'all really ain't going to, y'all got a lot of hateration in Jersey. Thank you. That's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Thank you. All right, let's just go to 20. Let me just get 17, 18. Come on, pop. Thank you. 17, 18, 19, and 20. 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, I'm still here. Thank you. 17. Thank you. Where's 18? You waving. I don't see nothing. I need something in my hand. I don't know if you feel what the Holy Ghost are giving. Thank you. 18. Thank you. I'm waiting on two more people to come. I need two more people to come. Here come. Thank you. 19. You know church folk will fool you. They'll fold it up. <laughs> come on. Come on. What number am I on? Y'all supposed to be helping me. Thank you. That's 19. Come on. Walk around here. Come see. I done come all the way to, from Baltimore. Come on. What number am I on? 20. Thank you. 21. Let's just go to 25. Thank you. Real quick. Thank you. They still, this is the most pathetic clap. 
Thank you, Mama. That's 22. That's 23. Thank you, sir. That's 24. Y'all, when that 25th one come, y'all better tear the club up. I'm waiting on one more. Where's 25? One more. Come on, come on. You the one we've been waiting on. 25. Look at your neighbor and say, are you the one or should we look for another? As I'm only waiting on one more per You holding up the whole service. Yeah, you can't be walking right now. Now you think, come on, that's my mans in them. Come on. Here come 25. 26, they say trying to get in the door. Come on. Thank you. We are 24 and a half. Thank you. Thank you. That's 25. You coming? Thank you, sir. 26. Thank you. Here comes 27. Are y'all going to shout about it? Here come 28. Thank you so much. All right. Let's just go to 30 and stop. We're just going to go to 30. What's this you giving me? Yeah, hold that for one minute. You trying to fool me. Thank you. All right. I need 29 and 30. I need 29 and 30. I only need two more people. Come on. I need you right with Ashford and Simpson, Peaches and her. I need two people, two people to come very quickly. Look down your row and tell your row, our whole row can't be broke. Somebody got to be balling on our row. Amen. I only need two more people to come. What's $100 to a future millionaire? I just need two more people to come right where you are, right where you are. Thank you so much. Here comes 29. Thank you. Y'all really tired of clapping, ain't you? You coming or you walking? Thank you. I'll meet you halfway. Thank you. All right, 29, 30. Somebody give God some glory. That's the best shout y'all got. This is what I want you to do. Listen, be seated. This is what I want you to do. Every person who is not, what's uh, uh, 31 plus 30? So we did 61. Here comes 62. Thank you. All right, so this is what I need you to do. Huh? Oh, huh? I told her to stay there? Oh, how you doing? I don't, I don't even know why it's, okay. Nice to meet you, thank you. This is what I need you to do. I was in the spirit, it done left me. So I need you right where you are, <laughs> right where you are. This is what I need you to do. Every person who is not a part, first of all, can we thank God for the 62 people that gave? <laughs> Oh, y'all ain't shouting good. 62 people that gave. You ought to thank God for that. This is what I want you to do. Listen to me. Every person, every person who has not given as a part of my 62, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get your best offering that ends in an odd number. You don't have 100, get as close to 99. Amen. Tonight it will do. Amen. I want you to get as close to $100. Here it is. I just want your offering to end <clears throat> in an odd number. You don't have 99, get 73. You don't have 73, get 51. You don't have 51, get 19. Don't have 19. The Lord is your shepherd. Get 23. Amen. You got a driving problem. Hit the speed limit, 55. I need you right where you are, right where you are. Every person. I want you to get an offering that ends in an odd number. Even our dear friends who are watching online, I need you to partner with me on the night. I want you to get an odd offering. Why? Because God's going to do something odd in your life. He's going to do something strange. He's going to do something that doesn't make sense. Second thing that I want you to do, if you're writing checks, you're writing them to Bishop. Thank you. This woman is serious, Bishop. She's serious. I mean, for real. For, were you a teacher? What, what are you? But what did, what did you do out, outside of church? What were you doing? Post office. Post office, yeah. Those who did not get your mail, she had it. Amen. I need you right where you are. I need you right where you are. This is what I need you to do. Get an odd offering, and then I want you to do secondarily. Watch this. I want you to get every piece of change that's in your possession. 
every piece of change that's in your possession. Take pennies out your penny loafers. I want you to open the second zipper of your purse. Run back to the car, get dirty quarters out the ashtray. Get every piece of change that's in your possession, please. I want you to get an offering that ends in an odd number and every piece of change that ends in your possession. Why? Because God's got the authority to change everything that's connected to you. He can change your address. He can change your job description. Y'all ain't talking back to me. He can even change your tax bracket. For some of you, he'll change your marital status. I can't hear nobody. I want you to get an odd offering and all the change you can muster. As soon as you get that seed, watch this. As soon as you get that seed, would you come lay it on the altar? And when you lay it on the altar, say two words. The two words I want you to say are new season. New season. Begin coming quickly. Everybody, everybody is giving. Everybody is giving. Come on, come on. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing is coming my way. Every person, every person, get your odd offering, all the change you can muster. It's a season. It's new. Every person is coming. Every person is so in. Come on. It's a new. And it's a new. A new day. New day. It's coming, my. It's a season. Everybody ought to be giving in this. Come on. Everybody sing. It's a new. And it's a new. A new day. A new day. It's coming mine. Bless you, sir. It's a 